sponsored by Taylor Freelance, Rainier Ballistics, Hodgson Powders, and JPL Precision. Hey, Power Factor fans, I'm going to let you in on something. It's a new product. It's not a product review so much as it is a product announcement, but you heard it here first. This is a new magazine from Checkmate Industries. As you know, uh, I'm a proponent of Checkmate products. I use them just about all my 1911s. And uh, this is a new mag that they're going to have out uh, soon. I think this is a pre-production model. It's a uh, oxide carbon steel mag as opposed to the stainless competition mag uh, that's been available for the last few years. So it's based on the existing eight round competition magazine. It's the extended tube design uh, to allow for extra spring length so that it's a true eight round magazine. Instead of trying to fit the eight rounds into the seven round tube, uh, the tube is about, uh, it's about a half an inch longer than the seven round tube. So you can, you can imagine uh, you can get three or four more coils of the spring in there. But the new mag is, uh, again, carbon steel uh, with a black finish. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like bright silver stuff, uh, your defense guns, you want it to be a little more low key, it is black. But they've got a new polishing technique that leaves the surface really, I mean, it's really a mirror uh, polish on the outside and the inside. And it should be really good uh, both in terms of smooth feeding and uh, ejecting and loading uh, because it is smooth on both the inside and the outside. There's also a slightly improved follower. This uh, is the patented bullnose follower. It's a, essentially a product improved version of the old Devel uh, McCormick uh, Shooting Star follower in that it has a, a skirt that wraps around the front and keeps the follower from tilting. One of the knocks against the old Shooting Star follower is because it's in contact only with the back of the tube, it can tip forward and the skirt at the front prevents that tipping action. And then they've also slightly widened the shelf here that engages the slide stop so that you've got just a little more purchase between the slide stop and the follower to help ensure uh, reliable lockback. And I haven't even had a chance to use these. I just got them last weekend. Here's one uh, seated in my Colt. Get it here in the light. Um, you can see that uh, we don't have that um, bright silver uh, sliver of the magazine tube sticking out here. Um, if, again, if you like your gun all black with a black uh, mag, it is shiny, um, but it's black. So if you like the idea of a, of a smooth, slick, black magazine, uh, keep your eyes out for the new uh, Checkmate 8-rounder. It should be out soon. I'm not sure. I think these, again, are uh, either very early production or pre-production mags. Uh, but keep an eye out for them. Uh, I'm going to be using them, I think, probably exclusively. I'm kind of a you know dark steel and wood kind of a guy, so uh, I'll be using those. And as I use them, I'll report back and give you a little more of an evaluation rather than just, like I said, this kind of an announcement. But keep an eye out for those. Check Mid Industries 8-round oxide carbon steel magazines. Hey, Power Factor fans. Uh, we've been uh, harping away on uh, shooting glasses and eyesight, and I've mentioned in a couple of episodes that when I'm shooting, I wear contact lenses, uh, That and my focusing strategy uh, I've heard described as a single eye focus. And what that means is, uh, because I'm a lefty and I'm left eye dominant, I have my left eye focused at front sight distance, and my right eye is focused to infinity. And I wear those contacts like that all the time, and it gives me pretty good general vision. If I'm trying to read, I've got pretty good focus with my uh, left eye. If I'm driving and I'm looking at traffic signals, I've got pretty good focus with my right eye. But I noticed that uh, my prescription is now three or four years old, and I just wasn't getting the sharp focus on the uh, front sight that I have been. So I went back to see my eye doctor, He's the same guy I've been seeing for 20 years, and although he's not a competitive pistol shooter, he is a, a shooter. He's well aware of uh, the necessity of having the front sight in focus, 
and strategies to help ensure that. And some people do things like progressive contact lenses. You can, you know, just tilt your head until the front sight's in focus. Um, I know some people uh, wear upside down uh, bifocals with the, the near vision part at the top. So as they bring their head to the sights, they're seeing uh, through the bifocal uh, near, near focus part of the lenses. And rather than get prescription shooting glasses, I've just tried to modify uh, my contact lens prescription. And to that end, I went to the doctor and I said, you know, I think I need to change the strong eye uh, correction in order to improve my front sight focus. And I demonstrated, you know, how far away uh, the front sight is. I essentially just held a pencil in my hand so that it extended out. Um, you know, about the distance that the muzzle was. We got an idea of how far away that was. The lens I'm currently wearing is a minus 0.275 correction. And the doctor said that each quarter diopter change alters the focal distance by four inches. So if I were to change from a 275 to a 250 or a 275 to a, a 3.0, that would either extend the, the focal length out four inches or bring it in four inches. And the problem that we kind of had was we weren't really sure which way we needed to go. Um, I shoot some guns with six inch barrels, some guns with three inch barrels. And so we had essentially, uh, we, it was almost a situation where we, we just didn't know which way to go, further or closer. And uh, so he gave me some sample lenses and the samples that I got are all extending the focus out. Um, my prescription is a minus 275. He gave me a minus three, a minus 325. This one is, uh, this is a minus 375. And these were all test lenses that I was going to wear while I shot and see if it improved. So I got the, uh, I decided let's try the one with the least correction, the 3.0, minus 3.0, which should extend the focus out four inches. So I put those on put one on, of course, because I'm still using the minus 450 in my right eye, go to the range, and it was the wrong direction. Uh, with a four inch revolver, neither the front sight nor the rear sight was in focus. So I called the doctor and he said, essentially, tell my assistant that whichever lens works for you, that will be your prescription. Fill out, she'll fill out the prescription based on which lens you want to use. So I called back and I said, Doc, or actually um, the Doc assistant, Ms. Doc assistant, um, the 3.0 didn't work. It was going in the wrong direction. So the 325, 350, 375 are just going to make it worse. They're not going to make it better. So she, and I said, could you get a 250? I'll run up to the clinic and pick it up because I'm going to shoot tomorrow, essentially. Run up and pick up the new lens. It was a 250. I put it on when I got home. It was a two lens set. They kind of come in, in a set like this, and they're one day wear. They're not uh, reusable. And so I thought, okay, I'll put one on when I get home from work and just move around the house and see how it works for, you know, eating dinner and watching TV. And then I'll save the other one for the next morning to wear to the match. And I had a little bit of a sense just in the few hours that I wore them on Friday night that the difference in the correction was just a little too great um, for me to get this sense that my eyes were really working together. I've been wearing this 450-275 combination for years now, and I don't notice really that sometimes if I'm trying to read something at distance, I will do this, or if it's something up close, I'll do this, just to, to, to get the, to focus in on the eye that's got the best focus. But the combination together, I can pretty much see everything, and I don't have a sense that my eyes aren't working together. But with the 250 lens, I did have this sense that the, the, the difference between the two was just a little too much. And I'm thinking maybe I'll only wear the 250s to the range. So I'm going to call the doctor uh, again on Monday and say, is it possible to maintain my normal prescription at 450 and 275, but then... I'll be able to buy, like have an alternate prescription just for shooting. I'll buy a supply of these one day 250 lenses. And on days that I'm gonna to go to the match, I'll put the 250 in. After the match, I'll just take it out and throw it away and save you know, until the next, next time I shoot a match and just use them on match days because they're good enough for driving to the range and getting home and filling out score sheets and stuff. But I just think for 24 hour or 16 hour a day wear, the difference is just a little too much. But for shooting, it was a dramatic difference. I mean, I was really surprised that um, the front sight focus was m 
much improved and yet I still had the good distance vision for target acquisition and, and whatnot. So it worked out really well. But again, I just think the difference was just a little too much. So I'm going to see, call and say, yeah, let's, and I'm going to order, you know, 10 sets of the 250s, save those for match day, and then uh, just wear the others for day-to-day -day wear. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But again, in the furthering, uh, you know, saga of uh, eye correction, uh, there's just another tip. You can get that correction, even if it's just for match day, uh, so you have that nice, sharp front sight focus.